Yo, what's going on guys? My name's Cast. Welcome back to another episode of Reaction of Haikyuu. Today we are on Season 4, Episode 4. So I'm coming straight off the back of Season 4, Episode 3. I uh, really enjoyed that episode. Hinata is learning a lot of new things. He's gaining a new perspective. We have Karasuno playing against Tokonami in other practice matches, getting their practice in. Kageyama, also at the All Japan Youth Training Camp or whatever, where the really big boys are, right? Where the really good players are. I don't know if we're going to get more of that this episode or we're going to go back to Hinata. Either or is fine with me, preferably one of those two rather than Karasuno because they're seeming to do a little bit more basic stuff, which is no problem. But yeah, I mean, I'm really enjoying this arc so far. A lot more mature than the previous arcs were, I think. Some more deeper conversations to be had about how to get better and how to expand yourself into the realm of the professionals, of the experts. And I'm just really enjoying the direction of it so far so if you want to watch my reactions to the next episodes right now they're over on my patreon season four episode five is available on the soul tier and episodes past that shown right over here are available on the ascended tier those reactions are also extended length meaning that you get more reaction and more discussion to go along with each and every video also you can go follow me over on my socials such as my twitter my instagram and my kick the links of course are in the description all right let's jump into it oh right yeah suki wanted to talk with him Hopefully, he wants to practice with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, he does want to practice. Good. Thank you, Suki. Hell yeah. Season 4, Episode 4, Take It Easy. <laughs> Broccoli number one and two. That's how you distinguish them? That's what's going on in your head? Not too much, apparently. Look at this guy. Sakusa. This guy doesn't even look like he belongs in the show. That's not it, actually. Alright, buddy. Yes. Better show some respect, sir. He's handling this with some humility, though. What's the deal with this? Yeah, a little bit, it seems. Nothing wrong with that, but come at it with a little bit more of a kind approach, maybe. Oh, damn. What are the two marks above his eye? Are those like birthmarks? Okay. He's got a very regimented lifestyle. Observe your enemies, take care of yourself, but just be a little nicer, maybe. You can tell that there's more there. Is that what he's getting at? Him. Interesting. He has a very interesting character design. For some reason, his is just so, uh, it stands out, you know? Oh. Damn. He's having his, uh, identity crisis at the age of 80. Twisted in horror. <laughs> what is his reaction, I wonder? Because I can imagine being a quite a few things. A big mix of emotions. No, don't do that. No, you gotta show us. Don't do that. Is he actually... You know, I can't help but maybe he feels good for Hinata that's able to achieve something he never did. I wouldn't be so sure that there's a lot of positive emotions in his reaction, though. More like fear, dis despair, that he gave up when he never should have. 
Nice. He's actually getting to play some. Love to see it. Yeah, because you're short. Alright. <laughs> I believe it's my turn. Okay. That's what he's saying. I like him. I don't... Man, I'm getting a little bit rusty on some of these guys' names because there's so many characters in the show. Suki got that read. Oh, he's not used to that. <laughs> he's got to be cocky. He has big shoes to fill with Ishijima. Kyakuzawa wasn't either. The two meter guy? I think that's his name. He's also pretty new. No, yeah, I don't think so. Maybe it's a bit of both, though. Yeah, you gotta be prepared. Suki might need a little bit of this perspective as well. Maybe Hinata can give him some advice to help him out. Although Suki probably has everything that Hinata could offer him, realistically. Hey look, a coach actually doing his job. Actually being useful. <laughs> Washijo. Hell yeah, he's good. He always has been. And people know him as the king. He's very good at adapting to other people. Yeah, it actually reminds me of Oikawa. We saw Oikawa doing that with college students. Some more parallels between them. Yeah. Oh, this guy. All right. What do you got for us? Oh, the animation is going up. Damn, he's got hops for sure. Huge jump. Holy. Damn. That was one of the longest duration spike shots we've ever had for animations. Really represents how much time we spent in the air. Cool. That got him hyped up. Kageyama's happy about that one for some reason. Maybe it reminds him of Hinata. What's he what team is he even on? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Is that Tanjiro's voice actor? It sounds like Tanjiro. Ah, yes. Yes. But. You're just like Hinata. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have another short person that jumps very high. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hinata could get this good, maybe? Is what he's thinking. Mia Atsumu. Wait a minute. Hold on, I have to go back for a second. He sounds really familiar too. Why does he sound so familiar? But I can't put like a I can't put like a voice to him. I can't put like another character's face to him. You're a goody two shoes, he said. What does that mean? I thought you were pretty prickly at first, but you're a goody two shoes. What, because he adjusts everybody and doesn't do his own thing? Maybe he's criticizing that he doesn't have like a more dominant style that's his own. But I mean he's a setter, so I don't know if that has a different connotation to other roles. Setters more have to work with everybody else's style than have their own. I don't know. I'm not sure what that means. But he was adjusting to everybody else, so maybe he's calling him like a pushover. 
He's up up here again. Maybe he'll notice something new. He is literally getting a different perspective. Maybe there's some subtlety that he won't notice unless he gets hide on it. Least favorite phrase, go all out. What's his problem? Why? Is he just not like getting told that he's not trying hard enough? Or maybe is doing his best and then to get told that hurts? I don't know. I shouldn't be so judgmental, man. Oh, okay, okay. That's the episode title. What's the significance, though? Hmm. He's also huge, which means probably more energy to move around. Damn, that's mean. I mean, honest, but mean. Any lovely insight you'd like to add, Washi Joe, maybe? No? Okay. Just sit there. Add your crass comment in. As you see fit, I suppose. Damn. That's kind of dirty. <laughs> he's like a cat. Yeah, he's doing like minimum efforts to not generate anticipation for what he's going to do, I guess. Minimum effort, maximum results. Huh? <laughs> Like I said, he also would just get tired faster because he's bigger. Yeah, I feel like two on two is a place where you can't have many mistakes. It'll cost you every single time. Damn, man. Why are you making me feel for this guy? But that's the wrong mindset. I mean, it's a fair mindset. I get it, but you're not going to get better by avoiding it. Maybe Hinata can help him somehow. Oh, didn't mean to say that out loud. Yeah. I think Hinata gets it, though. I mean, how many times has Hinata been in a situation where he's the one that's, like, behind everybody else? That's all he's ever known, so like, if anybody's gonna give him advice, it would be Hinata, right? He's the one that can understand his situation the most, without a doubt. And for some reason, you know, as airheaded as Hinata is, and all of the weaknesses that Hinata has always had, he's actually really understanding when it comes down to very simple things like this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was recognized for something. <laughs> what do you mean, just? That's a huge advantage. True. He's got really good base stats. Nah, he just wants him to do his best. Kind of like Kuro did. I mean, if he gets better and then he plays against him, it spurs his own growth. It's mutually beneficial. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. It's those little moments like that in Haikyuu that are just why this series is so good to me. It's always little line deliveries like that. I don't know. More so than even the volleyball games. 
簡単絶対簡単なやつ So this is what this guy needed. He didn't need people saying like, oh, he can't keep up behind his back. He needs somebody that like genuinely wants him to be better and gives him that confidence to move forward. That's what a lot of these characters have needed and he's no different. Come on, you got this. That height. Yeah. Take it easy. He's tensing up too much. Yeah, you can always slow it down, take it easy, think a little bit more, catch your breath. The results can be pretty significant. That's what Kunumi was doing. Ku Kunumi was his name, I think. Yeah. Sure, it's not a freak quick, but it's a save. And you can work on it from there. It can become more natural to you over time. You can up the tempo as you get used to it as well. There you go. Hell yeah. Hmm. Any? No? Okay, no. Not this time either. All right, no worries. I'm sure, surely whatever he says next will be super impactful. Hell yeah! Hell yeah, man! God damn it! This is what I love about Haikyuu. I don't know, it's just moments like this. I don't really understand you too much, but that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they learned off of him. So, I get it. Ooh, the detail. Okay. Oh, we don't even know why he was doing that. Okay. Huh. Well, I really like this episode too. Damn! This season has just been so good. I think I like this might be my favorite episode of the season so far. It just had so many little moments that were just so satisfying, I guess you could say. Oh, man, I don't know. And look, we got a lot of emphasis on characters that, okay, I, I don't want to go into a whole long spiel about it, but I think a lot of anime, and we all know anime that does this, they introduce characters that are like a temporary challenge. Let's say like Hyakuzawa, right? The two meter guy. He was a temporary challenge whenever we played against him in that match. And then we defeated him when we gave him the whole nice wholesome send off like, oh man, you can be better in the future, blah, 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 you know, yada, yada, yada. A lot of anime, we would never see him ever again. But now we got him coming back into an episode. It wasn't like super significant. He didn't have to take the main spotlight, but like we introduced him once again. We updated on where he was at. We retained a lot of the simple knowledge like he's a new player he's very big he has very realistic problems that you would think someone like him would have just based on the nature of who he is in this environment and we adapted off of him and not only him but the kunimi guy as well again i'm so sorry about my pronunciation for that one that one's hard for some reason but we introduced these new characters reintroduced these characters we gave them realistic adaptable problems Hinata had his influence they gave some back. It was mutually beneficial for like almost everybody. And it's just like a, it's a very organic, but real feeling plot development, if that makes any sense. And I just got to really commend Haikyuu for being able to do that because I feel like it's harder to execute than you would initially think. It would be so much easier for the solution to just pop out of thin air or just come to Hinata or that he would just have this great advice to give him based on nothing or whatever but like it, it just all connects in a way that feels really organic and understandable and because of that it comes off as more compelling but yeah guys that does it for season four episode five of haikyuu once again just a fantastic continuation on the journey we got some new interesting characters from kageyama's camp as well we got the one that started with an s with the black hair who's kind of a jerk but very uh meticulous kind of giving me that king baro vibe from blue lock a little bit he likes to keep things straight and orderly no germs none of that also like a little bit maybe a little more understanding and uh threatened by other people than borrow might have been but i think that if anything is probably a good thing for him to have that way he's just not like completely blind and cocky about everything going into it also the uh, white haired character can't remember his name right now but he's short but he's fast and he's got a very good jump which kagayama said is a good reference point and I can only take that to mean good reference point for what Hinata could become. 
So very interesting with him. Uh, we got that glance of uh, Kageyama at the end looking very serious and maybe disturbed by something. Not really sure what that's about. Also, Atsumu. Atsumu was his name. I'm going to look up his voice actor right now because it sounded so familiar and it was bothering me before. I'm not going to look on anything. I just need to see his voice actor. Oh, <laughs> he's voiced by uh, Mamoru Miyano. Of course, of course. I, one of the most distinguished, like distinguishable voice actors in anime. And for some reason, I didn't pick him out. I mean, he's not uh, he's not Dio's voice actor, but still. Yeah. Wow. Mamoru Miyano is playing him. That instantly just makes him so much more of an interesting character because if you don't know miyano does some insane voice acting he's a legend he's stellar and he's very fun with everything he does he's very jubilant usually snarky maybe sarcastic i don't really know how to he, he does have his type he is a bit of a typecast but at the same time he does have so much vocal range but he's always going to put on a stellar performance so i don't know anything about that guy but instantly interested in this character just because of who he's voice acted by very very cool overall another great episode thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i will see you next time